Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I'm Dan Sams. And uh, how about the Oscars? Yeah. So I I never watch the Oscars anymore. I used to watch it to see if there was any movies that I would want to see. Because, you know, the more obscure but sometimes good movies used to be, you'd hear about them on there. But now everything sucks. I mean, just everything. Right. So, and I'm annoyed at all of these ridiculous, like, crazy, awful people. So I just haven't watched the Oscars. But... As the Oscars are on last night and I'm hanging out with my family, I look at my phone and all of a sudden I'm like, well, something happened with Chris and (laughs) and Will. (laughs) And like, it is all the memes, like every, like my entire feed is that same image over and over and over again of Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. Man, here's the real question that I have for you. Do you think that was real or the CIA staged Will Smith <laughs> slap and Chris Rock. I am not a hundred percent sure about whether or not it was faked or not, but I'm my inclination oh, no, that, is that he, it was. Yeah, that was real. Like he was. I mean, pissed. He was really mad. Like when I first saw the hit, I thought it was staged. Right. Like I'm like, okay, that's that's funny, well played. But the whole thing about like him, I mean, him cursing at him, and you see his face, and you're like, no, this dude's serious. Well, and uh, you could see it in Jada's yeah. face when he said the joke. Like, she was, like, pissed and hurt. Yeah. What did you hear? She Apparently, she has alopecia, so yeah. she's losing her hair. She didn't just shave it right. to make a fashion Which is statement. why she was pissed and hurt. Yeah. Which, this is one of those things where I'm like, okay, so Chris Rock, he, that was a not a great joke. But then I'm also thinking, if you didn't know that she had that, I mean, that's just classic, like the kind of thing you're supposed to jab on in Hollywood, right? Like, but the fact that she's got the disease makes it over the line. But and so here's then I'm the like, thing, though, like, OK, I, I have a real problem with it being over the line. If it was a dude who had alopecia, would we not be perfectly OK ripping him to shreds because he's balding? See, here's the funny thing, though. And I'm not sure she's a woman because I'm not a biologist, but (laughs) I just I kind of feel like, wait a second here. We can't make a jab at a woman assuming she's one. (laughs) Assuming she claims to be one. I don't know. I've never heard her speak to this issue. I, I just I first of all, like you said, this is the Oscars. It's Chris Rock. He's telling jokes. That's yeah, what, what did you is. expect? Yeah. 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 This is, well, this is kind of my point. It is over the line in the sense of like, I would not make that joke because I, as a Christian, I don't want to cause that kind of like, I don't want to be unkind, but this is exactly what we, but expect. it's not like it was a mean joke. No, it wasn't particularly mean. Demi yeah. Moore shaves her head and GI Jane. Yeah. I mean, it was a very Hollywood joke. Um, now again, I don't think no, if he knew that it was unkind, I don't think that was good. And when I say over the line in the sense of like, okay, it's not kind, but it's not outside the bounds of what is, I mean, it's not slander. He's not, it's nothing particularly egregious. It's unkind. And so it's interesting to me, Will Smith's reaction, because like the appropriate reaction would have been to just have a stern face and just say like, you know. But, but like he walks on the stage. Part of me is like, eh, you know, it's ballsy of you, Will. <laughs> you know, um, there's all kinds of things that I'm like, man, what, what a mess. A little bit of props to Chris Rock for keeping his composure and just going right on making jokes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, first of all, I understand both their positions, right? I get like I, if someone were to rip on my wife, I can understand that. And he did an open-handed slap, right? It wasn't like he did a closed fist punch. So I kind of yeah. felt like he restrained himself there. 
uh, Chris Rock, he's a comedian. His job is to tell jokes. He did that. And honestly, it wasn't an over the line joke. Now, it was to her because of what she's dealing with. And she's a woman. Yeah. So it's like, oh, because again, if she were a dude, you'd have no problem ripping on the fact that they're going bald. Like you just wouldn't. That's that's the deal. Yeah. So but I, I was looking at it going, you know, first of all, how full of crap are you, Will? Like, w- did you hear his acceptance speech? And he's like, you know, th- this movie taught me to really defend my family. And, and I'm like, dude, you don't care if some dude sleeps with your wife because you have an open marriage. But you're going to get pissed when a comedian at the Oscars who's doing his job makes a joke that isn't even over the line. And I was just like, you're full of crap. Like, I can't, I can't hear anything coming out of your mouth. And like, we're supposed to praise you for being this great husband who's defending his wife. Meanwhile, you're sleeping around, she's sleeping around, and you don't really care about the sanctity of marriage. So I'm sorry, I don't, I don't buy it. I'm not buying what you're well, saying. I don't know if you follow uh, Doan Creative. Uh, Doan is this dude who, um, he's actually a believer. He's a good, faithful Christian. But he did a lot. He films a lot of music videos. So he's he's kind of known, like he would do a lot of Blink-182 videos and Deftone videos. And really interesting dude. But like he has become this like social media dude in, in addition to it. And so he's doing, he provides commentary. So it's, it's not always like, well, here's a Christian commentary on this. But he does have a Christian perspective. And then he is happy to just talk about how you communicate yourself, what's going on. And he's happy to jab on Hollywood anytime. And it's usually insightful from somewhat from a marketing perspective. So he shares that image and just said, Hollywood is dead. He's like, all of the gatekeepers are gone. Like, I mean, Hollywood's just a meme now. And he really had an interesting perspective on like, this is like, to your point, like here's two people that don't believe in the sanctity of marriage. They get offended about a joke that like, I don't think was kind, but was not particularly egregious. Right. And like them, they'll make a big deal. They'll, I mean, he flies off the handle, smacks a dude. And they're just kind of like this. I mean, this is just, this is all a joke now. Like Hollywood is, is worthless now. I mean, it always, it has been for a long time, but they just had like his, his commentary, I think was worth worthwhile. Like this is just the, like the pinnacle moment of like, yep, can we all just see how ridiculous these people and this world is? Anyway, yeah. But um, we all need to care when they say we need to drive electric cars and and it's oh, good that man. gas prices are going up. And I tell you what, our carbon footprint, I'm, <laughs> whatever. That's that stuff's pissing me off real bad right now. Gas here is, I mean, we're barely past a year. Since it was under two dollars a gallon, what's it at? And now, now it was it was four dollars and nineteen here, and I know it's going to be way more where you're at anyway. But four dollars and nineteen cents yesterday. So then we have that. We have the whole fertilizer issue. That's that's in you know, and then plus the gas itself. Um, we got some real food price issues that are coming along, um, and so um, it just pisses me off because it's on purpose. Uh, this is this is where I just I'm losing patience with it that I mean, I know people that are in the margins and barely getting by right now. And um, I, by God's grace, I do OK. I'm, I'm certainly not rolling in the dough, but I do OK. I'm, I'm not worried about feeding my family right now. Um, but man, all of this mess and because this feckless mess of a geriatric car bomb is supposedly president and is and is doing the things he's doing it's, and it's causing problems to real people and it just it's pissing me off man what like, i I'm, find dumbfounding is how people are still defending him like it's not his fault this is all trump's fault like they'll come up with any excuse in the world now now first of all let me let me be the first to say yeah Trump is partially responsible because he okayed the spending of trillions of dollars, which is driving everything up 100%. Like you cannot divorce that 
from he had a hand in the inflation. today. Yeah, he certainly had a, fan, a hand in, in the inflation. That's Absolutely, a hundred percent. But it is not all his fault because it was all of Congress and Senate that passed that crap. And even though we were all sitting there, like you and I were going, look, I'm going to take the money, but this is a huge mistake. Like you cannot spend this kind of money and not have it affect everything. And you cannot close down people's livelihoods and not have it affect everything. Yeah. And uh, like for us, I, as soon as we're done with the podcast, I got to go get gas in my car because I have to go to Costco to get gas because it's the cheapest place around. It's five forty nine a gallon today at Costco. Like normally, if I went to my normal Chevron, it'd be over six bucks. It's ridiculous. It's re- it's absolutely ridiculous. Welcome to America. Yeah. Where we, where we pay to have a pipeline built in Russia and we cut off the pipeline in our own country. We don't use our own oil that we could use and we pay the extra money. Not only are we buying it from somewhere else, but we're having to pay to have it shipped over here. <sighs> like that doesn't have a carbon footprint. Those yeah. boats are clean energy. They're not nuclear. That's the only way you get clean energy is nuclear power. And everyone gets all offended at nuclear power. And it's like, that's actually clean energy. Works really what well. Heck? Yeah. Works really well when you don't have some damn communists running the nuclear plant. I'm serious. Like, yeah. like it actually, it's worth, if you haven't seen Chernobyl on HBO, they did a really good job being pretty stinking accurate to what happened at Chernobyl. And everybody freaks out over is Chernobyl and Fujiyama, right? That's the ones that everybody goes to. And they're like, oh, I'm scared. Like, watch what happened at Chernobyl. It was all communist bureaucratic bull crap. And if they'd been run by a free market capitalist company, you bet that thing would still be running smooth. Um, we'd, we'd still be running like they'd still be running off of it today. Um, yeah, it just watched. It was like a domino effect of everybody doing the communist thing of pretending nothing was happening when everything was going to crap. Um, yeah, great document. Not a documentary. It's dramatized, but it is right on the verge of being a documentary because it's it's from the perspective of the guy who did all of the investigating and reporting on it. Anyway, little side note. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the other man. thing, too, is in the U.S., I believe now, now I'm not an expert on this, but I believe. The agency, I don't know if it's Department of Energy or whoever it is that is in charge of uh, nuclear power plants in the U.S., there's only, I've been told, there's only five approved designs. And you have to, like, if you're building one, it's one of those designs. And so what they've done is they've really limited how much you can screw things up, whereas other countries, like you free for all, do what you want. And so then you got cut in corners and you got this, that, and the next. But when they had, hey, you know what? We got these designs. These designs work. We know they're good. Stick with that. I actually, because because of the longevity that a nuclear power plant can have when it goes bad, I mean, the longevity of harm, I think it is good to have certain like safeguards in place, Um, you know, because you can not go to that area for a few thousand years if you if you screw it up. I mean, that's not such a good thing. So I'm kind of okay with. You know, let's let's limit the design features, if you will. Well, what what it needs to come down to is um, free market security on things like that is a wonderful thing, right? When we say because I mean it's just like um, it's like food service. I don't want to poison my customers. I lose customers when I poison my customers, right? I want to run things clean. And so if we have best practices in the industry that cause things to be as safe as possible, I, we want that. That's what people don't realize is the free market actually wants to drive safety. And I always tell people, I'm like- You know, I, I have an issue with that and that I don't completely agree with you on that. Really? Because when I look at the food industry, that is absolutely not what they do. They absolutely are addicting people to bad food and it causes harm. Like the reason why we have so many health problems in the United States is because of our food supply. The crap that they put in there, the added sugars, these chemicals, it addicts people to it and they like that and they don't care that they're killing them because it's going to take 80 years to kill them or 60 years. Or whatever well, that timeline and is. And they're not worried about the it because they're making money all along the way. So I, I don't agree with 
you know, I want people to live because I'm going to make more money. I do not see that in the food industry at all. But Pete, isn't there a food and drug administration that is regulating? <laughs> that is freaking bought and paid for by the very people they're regulating. So, but this is my point. I mean, this is my point is that the regulation is a corporatized regulation that in which the government is in bed with the corporations. True. Um, yeah. Right. So we, I mean, we have the same thing with drugs. The the regulation, if anything, um, is is bastardized at best. But I would argue that the regulation is actually designed to cause more harm. And so this is why I advocate for much more of a free market. If you get the government out of it completely, now you the only thing that you have driving it is the free market. And and that tends to go pretty well. And so this is why I would argue for a free market driven set of standards as opposed to a government, because now with the government, now I all I have to do is find that one guy that's making that decision and I buy him off. When the free market is driving it, there's too many people for me to buy them all off. In fact, the only way to buy them off is to provide the best product and service so that they come to me instead of anybody else. So um, and then we well, that goes into a whole other thing. Then we all we have to really cover is these um, kind of basic things. It's like, don't poison people. Well, that's, we already have rules against that. Right. And so there's, there's ways to handle that through really, really basic laws. Anyway, that goes into a whole other libertarian discussion, but, yeah. um, I'm with you on the practical, but my argument is that the reason why things are not going as they should is because it's not actually a free market, but yeah. Yeah. And you could be right on that. I mean, I don't know. I've never thought about that, that side of things, but, uh, you know, I do look at, I, I look at what they're doing both on the food side, how they're intentionally addicting people. Um, I mean, you know, I, I don't know that I've talked about it on this podcast. I've talked about it on other podcasts that I have, but, you know, I spent the majority of my life obese, extremely obese. And it was really, <laughs> the ironic part is, it was really when I watched a documentary, which I'd never watched food documentaries. And I watched this documentary and I discovered that I'd been basically lied to my whole life, you know, and just said, oh, you're eating too much. N no, it was literally the foods that I was eating. And they were designed to keep me addicted to it. Or I don't know if they were originally designed, but they certainly know it has that effect. And so they, mm -hmm. they don't have a problem with it. And, yeah. um, and even, you know, you look at this, all these GMO seeds and things like that. And obviously I have a real problem with what they've done and how they've bought the court systems. And now it's like, okay, a farmer, if he uses the GMO seeds, right. For wheat, let's just say, I'm sure there's GMO wheat. Mm -hmm. He can't even use the seeds that his crops produce without going back and paying the people who genetically modified it. And it's like, mm -hmm. wait, what are you talking about? No, I, I paid you. I, I put the seeds in the ground. They grew up and you know what? I got more seeds now because that's how plants work. But the way our government has been bought off in, in the courts will know you got to go back and pay, you know, Mr. GMO provider over here. Mm -hmm. And that's completely jacked up. So it really is. It is yeah. very jacked up. Yeah. Paul, oh, you, yeah, I could go on a whole thing because it's it, the, the, I mean, this is the pharmaceutical industry and, and even how hospitals are around. Like right now, if somebody's sick and you go to the doctor, they're just going to probably give you a pill rather than talk to you about what you're putting into your body. And, well, they're not um, taught it. I mean, it, it's in some ways I kind of look at it and go, well, it's kind of not their fault. It's not like they learned any of that in uh, well, yeah, in but medical here's the school. Thing. I still go back to, yes, I, I get that, that that's not, about, but like I, I learned about how to put food in my body that was healthy, right? Like I, I'm but not, how did you learn? Well, so first of all, like I, I had some conversations with a wider gap. So one, this is the other thing that's worth noting is that like you talk to a doctor and he tells you one thing and you talk to a fitness instructor who is way healthier than that doctor and they tell you something completely different. And then you, you start having these conversations where you realize 
the story from the medical industry does not line up. Mm. Right. And so that's where it begins. The same way where we talk about these, you know, conspiracy things, it begins with acknowledging that these things can't all mutually be true at the same time, same place, same way. So once you realize that, then you start paying attention to that guy is healthy. Um, he doesn't go to the doctor all the time. He, he looks great. Um, he's in shape. He's, he's joyful. And you start saying like, all right, dude, what do you do? And then normally that's where I find like, okay, so this is who this guy is reading. Well, the results speak for themselves. Cause look at this guy's life. Um, I mean, you're a good example, Pete, like, how many people can look at the change you've made over the last like five years? Might not, it might not have been that long ago. I don't remember. Like, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to be like, Pete, so what did you do? And you're going to be able to list off these things or like by God's grace. And I recognize there's a whole lot of things going on like that, that are protecting me. And, and it could, God could change this tomorrow. And I could, I could die of some illness. Right. I'm hoping not, but like the it reality is COVID though, let's face it. Right. Yeah. Well, the reality is I don't ever go to the doctor or very, very seldom. Right. I eat healthy. I work out. I am joyful. I sleep well. I don't have any major health issues. Like I don't have any health issues. Like I'm I'm like, well, I've I've got a scratch here that will heal. Um, By God's grace, I don't have a lot of issues. And so if somebody asks me like, hey, Dan, what are you doing? Like, well, I can I can walk you through the diet that my family is on. And then I can talk you through like the, the, the books my wife was reading. And there's there's all these things that I'm like, man, even the survivalist stuff. When we talk about how to survive in the wild, the basics of survival is different than what medical people tell you. Mm, interesting. Right. So like you read the SAS survival guide and what you need to put in your body to survive when you don't have access to any food. And it is a whole lot different than what you're going to get on, you know, like a a nutrition's description from a lot of doctors. Um, Anyway, that's I'm I'm on a whole rant if I'm not careful. But yeah, but I would say the doctor doesn't have an excuse because like he's seen. I would agree. I I totally agree. It's their job to think that they're that they are ignoring the biggest thing that we do, which is what we put into our body. I also look at it and go, yeah, and I get it. You also weren't taught any of this, but maybe there's, maybe there's a correlation here. When you look at the stats of nation over nation and you see all the yeah. issues that we've got, like when I go to uh, Knott's Berry Farms, I don't go to Disneyland. I hate Disneyland, right? When I go to Knott's Berry Farm and I'm walking around the place I'm literally amazed at how many, at how few people I see that are fit. Like the majority of everyone is completely overweight. Mm. And part of me just looks at that and I'm like, man, if only you knew what I knew, because back in the day, I didn't know either. Like I was always yeah. taught, like it's, it's a matter of uh, calories in calories out, which is a lie. You know, growing up, we were told eggs are bad for you. You know, you're not supposed to have more than two eggs a week. And I'm like, dude, I have a minimum of three eggs a day now. <laughs> like, and I'm in great health. <laughs> and it's like, yep. wait a second. Okay. And, and now I've got this kind of mantra. All right. If God made it, I'll eat it. If God didn't make it, then I got to question it. That doesn't mean I don't eat it because I still have like a protein drink, but I'm not eating most of the crap that people are eating. Yep. And that's, Same. that's kind of been my, my thing, you know, did God make it, did it breathe basically at one point or did it grow in the ground? Okay. That's one thing. And, yep. you know, anyway, think about the other thing is we were all told to avoid fat. It's like, oh well, yeah. Right? Fat. Like you, you actually need fat. You that's, that's an important thing. Um, Your body was designed well, to process dietary fat. It was so not then, designed to process all this sugar that we put into our body. And when I say sugar, I don't mean cake and brownies, though I do mean cake and brownies. I mean, we don't understand that the bread we eat is so filled with sugar, that the pastas we eat, your yeah. body processes it so quickly, it might as well be sugar. Like all this man made crap, like when they take out the fat, like if you see fat free, run from it. That means they loaded it up with sugar because without the fat, it tastes like crap. So they load it up with sugar and yeah. that gives you a huge insulin spike. And your body has to start processing that stuff right away. And basically just means it's going to get stored as fat. Yep. Well, and, and not to mention all the things it's doing to your, to how your body functions with insulin. Right. Um, like your, 
you're going on this up and down thing and it's, it's just a wreck, man. Yeah. Um, well, and here's what's hap- what happens then is when you're ill from how you're treating your body, um, they just give you a pain pill or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so now you're not, so now your body is telling you something's wrong here. And rather than deal with that, they're like, well, let's just cover that up. Right. And, um, they, they do it in psychological health as well. She's talking really, about really? my wife, my wife's a counselor and she's just like the things that are out there that, are not even diseases that are just like, just somebody hasn't dealt with something in a healthy way, but how quickly people are like, well, no, you're depressed. Let's put you on this. Uh, you're anxious. Let's put you on this. And it's just drug, 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 drug. And now we can't figure out why everybody's on drugs. Um, Mm. yeah. Oh man. Well, wild conversations we could have. We're going to, we're already going to be down a rabbit trail. It's now, you know, it's funny. We get all the anti gunners mad at us and all the feds. Now it's going to be big pharma mad at us, dude. (laughs) So, uh, so I do have some fun things to share. Um, Let's hear it. it Seems like there was something else we needed to talk about today. The mantis was all I remember we were going to talk about. Uh, the mantis is amazing, man. I'm, I am going through all of the training stuff. I'm focusing on pistol because I don't know. Like it's 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 so much easier to get the pistol out than the AR. Uh, also, like so I can I can have ten minutes and I'm like, all right, I'm going to pull out the pistol and do whatever. Um, I am at my benchmark is about 93% proficiency, right? Um, it is in, it is doing incredible things for my ability to shoot. My speed of draw is down significantly. So I'm doing the like hostage drill where you've got to draw and shoot, be above 85% and shoot in less than two seconds, which that's just for the intermediate. I'm still not where I need to be. Um, but man, the thing is incredible. I'm, I am so hooked. I think everybody needs to do it. I, I can't talk about it enough. I'm getting better and better every day. Um, it's a good time. So mantis guys, and I'm not even, they're not even paying me to tell you this. Um, so I don't know. You got any good gear reviews, Pete, anything you've gotten into recently? No, because as you can see behind me, my, my office is emptying out, you know, we're getting ready to paint the whole house and then we'll put it on the market so I can, get the heck out of here. But one of the funny yep. things was uh, I was, <laughs> I got to be careful how I say this. As I was uh, cleaning out certain rooms, I have uh, firearms and firearms equipment stashed strategically throughout the house in a various amount of places. And I was cleaning out one and I was like, good God, how much stuff do I have? Like when it spread throughout the whole house, it's like you don't realize how much you've actually got. And I'm like finding loaded magazine after loaded magazine, just like tons of them. And I'm like, wow, okay. If it goes down, I guess I was ready. I I just didn't realize all the stuff that I had. And so anyway, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because I keep finding stuff. I'm like, oh man, dude, I'm going to have to like go through and do like a final check on the house and make sure I didn't leave anything <laughs> tucked away anywhere <laughs> the, and just forgot next, about it. The next owner of that house is going to be like, what is this? It's going to be like, what was this guy? This guy That's was crazy. Cool. <laughs> and they're going to think you were like some kind of a cartel. It's awesome. Oh, dude, as long as oh. they don't find the bodies that I put inside the walls, we're all good. <laughs> That's have you seen the thing where people get one of those like plastic skeletons and when they're building like <gasps> yes. they something they, I think that's that's terrible and hilarious at the same time. Oh, uh, it's great. Oh, what yeah. fun. What fun. Man, what movie was it? There was some movie I was watching. It was an it took place in Arizona and uh they found all these bodies that were literally put into the walls. It was a cartel, right? And they like whenever they kill someone, they'd cut the drywall out, put the body in the wall and put the drywall back. And they found like 23 bodies in this house. I can't remember the movie. I think yeah. it was, it might've been Sicario, like maybe Sicario two. Mm. I, I don't remember one or two. Oh, did, did you ever see Sicario? No. Oh, dude, you got to see Sicario. The first one, there is a scene at the border that is just epic because of the gunfight that they get in, in the middle of, you know, everyone's waiting to get to the border <laughs> and they're in their caravan and they get caught in traffic. Uh, they're military guys. 
and the cartel is trying to get him. And it's it's an epic scene. It's one of the best gun scenes in a movie. And I can't remember the director, uh, but he also did Wind River. He did Sicario. Like his his thing is he always puts one of these epic gun scenes in the movie. Like Wind River. Did you see Wind River? No. Oh, dude. I'm behind on hanging out with me more. Like yeah. Wind River. That was a movie. Uh, Peyton and I talked about it on the Church Planner podcast because it's like such. It, it, it'll it wreck you. Like it's like one of those movies where you're like, OK, this is what a friend does. Th- this is how a friend helps another friend because this guy lost his daughter years ago. So he's all jacked up and he's helping out his buddy who lost his daughter and mm-hmm. their friends, the, the daughters were friends. So that's why they're friends as, as fathers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he's a hunter. And so he ends up, they end up getting the guy. Right. And so, but it, like you, you watch it, like even Alan Hirsch, when he saw it, he was just like, man, I'm, I'm wrecked after I saw this movie. Cause you see how a friend is supposed to, to treat another friend, like how to be a real friend, but there's an epic gun battle in it. And I'm like, dude, I freaking love this director, man. Yeah. He I just knows how to battle. put them together. That's I love the gun battles, man. Oh, epic. awesome. So, um, yeah, you need to send me a list of, of movies. Actually, you should put it. I, we do put it in the telegram, man. We haven't been hopping on the telegram enough recently. No, um, no. I've just been throwing memes in there every once in a while. Dude, jump in, throw, throw us a list of movies we all need to see. And, uh, We'll keep the memes spicy. Yeah. Um, so, hey, I know you got to jump off of here. I will add two things. Can I Pro Gear was doing a sale on pouches recently. And so I jumped on and I bought some pouches for like 50% off. And I'm like, you know, your utility, like six by six pouch or six by nine pouch. And on a whim, I bought this. Can you even tell what this is, Pete? I can't not know. What is it? It is Kanai's Universal Holster. Now, I am against Universal Holsters. I have a personal view. Again, I don't think they're a good idea in general. But the purpose of this is because Kanai has these, a lot of their backpacks have this uh, concealed carry area where you can actually put an extra gun in there and it's Velcro inside. So this will Velcro in there and in like your bag, it will hold your gun easy to access. Nice little, like you can adjust this thing several different ways. It's like $4, right? Like, I mean, it's it's nothing. Here's what's what, because it's Velcro though, It'll go on a plate carrier. It'll go on all these. And it is surprising. Like, I am not recommending it as an external holster. But it is surprisingly secure for a Velcro universal holster. Like, it covers the trigger. It holds it on a couple of places. I'm kind of amazed. Um, So, check out Kanai's pouches. It's in the pouch section, even though it's not a pouch. It's a holster. For four bucks as a way to, like, throw it onto something else like it, this should never be your concealed carry holster it shouldn't really even be your main holster for anything else but for four bucks to have something extra that i can stick on something um even for storage like i could get a velcro wall and and store i could get 10 of these and store whole store guns or like mm. i'm kind of impressed so worth checking out not to mention their their cool little pouches are just great but thought i'd mention that um i'm mr gearhead today dude i love it love it so um anything else pete we need to talk about the world is going crazy so it's going crazy and i would just say uh give lake erie their plug all right yeah so hey everybody uh so actually a little side note lake erie got zucked i mean hardcore zucked man we were doing crazy stuff good stuff on facebook uh they saw a picture of a gun on there and we were out so um we're we're cranking up the Facebook page again, but you know, when you have eight thousand people and now you have you know like ninety seven, we got a long way to go. Um, however, um guys, we are we are maybe two months away from being able to sell memberships to the new facility. Good things happen. That's that's not an announcement of a date, but like we're real close to it. So check out learms.net. Big news continues to be rolled out on there. More is coming. It's just going to be an exciting time. Um, and we just passed constitutional carry here in Ohio. Mm. So you need to get in and get some training. Uh, don't think, oh, I don't need training now because I can just carry. No, you need training more now. In fact, you don't have to go through the headache of dealing with all the legal questions. Go in and learn how to actually carry and fight because the CCW class is 50% legality and basic safety go and do one of our real defense classes and learn how to defend yourself with a firearm check out learms.net we'll talk to you soon 
Cool. All right, guys. We'll be back next week with another episode. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye. Cool. See you. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.